good evening all i welcome you all for today's session so today dr akila junior resident in our department is going to share myths and facts about panchakarma so i welcome her so i request dr akila to proceed with the presentation thank you Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead ahead with the session today. so our topic for uh, today is panchakarma uh, the myths and facts um okay there are uh, uh, many misconceptions uh, surrounding panchakarma one very common uh, this concept is uh, that the general oil massage is uh, said to be panchakarma like many people think that just uh, any massage is can be correlated to panchakarma that is one thing uh, so today we will go to the different procedures that are involved in panchakarma it is not just one procedure there are many procedures so uh, we will just have a glimpse uh, of all these procedures what are the pre procedures preparatory ones what is the main procedure and what has to be done afterwards so we will have a glimpse of all that and uh, we will understand what is not panchakarma rather than what is uh, then there are other misconceptions uh, or ideas around it uh, that it can be done at any time like uh, now usually everybody goes through google and people read about panchakarma and they find that okay this has a detox effect on the body and they approach a hospital or some spa resort for for that matter and ask the doctor or whoever is consulting for a detox treatment and they think that everything is suitable to the body so that is another uh, misconcept and uh, thinking it is only having a rejuvenative effect or a detox pain effect then whether there are any restrictions to be followed uh, pertaining when you take panchakarma before after and during then uh, other things like if there are any complications that will happen when you take panchakarma so all these things are uh, you know uh, uh, kind of minus doubt when you think of the entire uh, panchakarma as a whole and uh, what i want to stress again is that just oil massage is not panchakarma it is just uh, one preparatory procedure before the actual main procedure okay so uh, panchakarma is a buzzword in ayurveda it has uh, it is a specialty branch of ayurveda and it is one big component of ayurveda treatment Uh, the therapeutic it generally uh, signifies the therapeutic regime that is the entire uh, an umbrella term for all the procedures that involve in eliminating toxic elements from the body. So uh, before directly delving into panchakarma, we can talk about uh, the three basic uh, chikitsa types or therapeutic trials. Okay, one is nidana parivartana, which is avoidance of positive factor that is. Kind of primary prevention, then samshana, which is palliative or pacification therapy, and samshodana. So uh, samshana is alleviation. That is, uh, you can say the GIT has both secretive and absorptive capacity. So samshana treatment or alleviation therapy, where we give khada, uh, decoctions, medicated decoctions, or chewnas, or for other forms, liquid medicine. or pills for that matter to alleviate or reduce your initiated uh, pressure that utilizes the absorptive nature of the uh, alimentary tract 
by samshodhana which is a more radical optical factory therapy uh, which definitely is uh, is panchakarma for panchakarmas that will utilize the secreted property of the uh, alveolar tract and help to uh, remove toxins from the body so the panchakarma is one main limb uh, under the vedic chikitsa or the, the triad of therapy so what are these panchakarma uh panch shodhana to panch karma are these five in number vahana which is used for in medicine induced perturbation basti is another uh, medication medicated enema uh, nasya is nasal airline and rakta mushna is blood related so we will get into uh, the detail of each of them in general uh, the benefit uh, is that panch karma is one unique method in uh, either a treatment in ayurveda it is a bioverification by the natural food organization it under the most effective therapeutic regime is done in the proper uh, manner and uh, it is a pathogenic breaker so other treatments are there that is some sure uh, some shamana that is pacification therapy as well as nidana uh, parivartana causative factors knowing the causative factors all those therapies are or other uh, langana langana pagana therapies are there which all may aid in um, reducing the vishesh dosha but the real pathogenesis breaker or uh, moving the toxin from the body is the real pathogenesis breaker or it is clear the uh, vishesh dosha from its roots so that is the benefit of doing panchakarma and panchakarma has three more action of prevention promotion and curation curative in nature so uh, panchakarma is for all the three dosha uh, before panchakarma we delve into direct uh, the, the main therapy of panchakarma that is the pradhan karma we have to prepare the body to accept the treatment so this preparation purva karma has some stages like uh, like you see here deepana pajana snehan and swedana so we will talk about it and after the pradhan karma post therapy also we have to follow samsarjana shamana and rasayana so what is the importance of this preparation you can't be directly go into pradhan karma so that is not possible we have to adequately prepare the body and uh, uh, make it uh, possible to absorb and, uh, the effects of the pradhan karma for that we use purva karma that is preparatory procedure so uh, two first uh, step is deepana pachana which is uh, digestion improving your digestive fire and uh, eliminating any toxin build up at the level of the agni or the metabolic fire so in that way so we give some uh, oral medicines to improve the digestive fire then we go to snehana uh, snehana go can be internal uh, e intake or internal um, sneha intake or external and external is the oral massage which is just one Uh, of the preparatory procedure of panchakarma, which is often thought of as one as the real panchakarma. So abhyanga is that is one preparatory procedure wherein it is the local mechanism of improving the blood supply, the GTM stimulation. Uh, so the arterial walls will dilate and achieve more circulation, so enhancing and improving the venous and lymphatic drainage. Also, it helps to improve the blood supply to the muscles and relieve the muscular stress fatigue. improve uh, stiffness also it is stimulate stimulate the sensory nerve and the uh, and give about the sensory inputs to your nervous system next is vedana oxidation diaphoresis so it will cause excretion of waste metabolite through the skin through diaphoresis so vedana will release the heaviness uh, lethargy and stiffness and coldness of the body parts body parts it's uh, predominantly kapha vata Uh, it, it helps in reducing kapha and vata endoplasm, and uh, all these procedures, the deepana pajana, improving your digestive fire, uh, snehana, uh, giving that ovulation externally as well as internally, and sedation, all these procedures will eventually prepare the body uh, and help to transport the accumulated vegetative dosha's to areas from where they can be easily eliminated out through the natural pathway. from uh, in ayurveda we say we 
uh, help these procedures will help to transport uh, these oceans from Shaka to Kosta, from where it can be eliminated. So, first, Panchakarma, uh, uh, that is Bhavana. Bhavana, uh, as I told you, is an administration of medicines overlay to end these formality. We, uh, we have different kinds of medicines along with the medicine can be. No, sand of the rock salt and all. In a particular preparation, in particular measurements, we have to uh, doses we administer to the patient for inducing this manner. And uh, if there are many indications and contraindications for manner, indications be kapha vitta vitiation, chronic cough and respiratory disorders, skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis. Metabolic disorders like diabetes, mellitus, obesity, thyroid disorders, excessive sleep, lethargy, mental disorders like depression. All these form of indications. But for telling that, we also have to look at the contraindications. Vamana, Vamana uh, being uh, a strenuous procedure for the patient, uh, requiring, uh, requiring quite a amount of uh, strength physically for the patient, mentally and physically for the patient, as assessed by the physician. So, um, only if that patient uh, qualifies to have uh, that much strength, we can administer Vamana for a patient, even though uh, he may have this kapha, pitta, vitiated um, conditions. And also other contraindications for Vamana are congestive heart diseases, chronic hypertension, etc. So uh, not only looking at whether the patient is suitable uh, based on the aggravated dosha, we also have to look at the other contraindications of the procedure when administering uh, such an important procedure, Panchakarma, preparatory as well as the uh, Pradhana Karma, we have to look at the uh, contraindications also. And the probable mode of action is uh, not exactly known. Probably it will, uh, it acts, its mechanism is by stimulating the vomiting center in medulla as well as, that is one way and second is irritation of the gastric mucosa thereby stimulating the vomiting center via vagus and sympathetic pathways. On um, examining the vomitus, it was seen to have abundant uh, mucopolysaccharides and small amounts of stercobilinogen and histamine. Um, the po post therapy uh, specifically mentioned for uh, Vamana is uh, Dhumapana herbal smoke inhalation uh, which will help in removing the aggravated or uh, residual uh, v-shaded doshas that are stuck or adhered to the oral mucosa and upper GIT. Next uh, procedure in line panchakarma therapy is virajana which is administration of oral medicine to induce purgation or loose tools. The indications here are pitta aggravated conditions like, uh, like herpes, skin conditions like herpes, acid peptic disorders, abscesses, chronic headaches, migraine, liver disorders, jaundice, spinomegaly, ascites etc. Uh, also in general, virajana is pitta kapha shamana in nature. So, also conditions whereby, wherein uh, you have a kapha aggravated state and you are not, the patient is disqualified to do vamana, he, he is contraindicated to do vamana, then we can uh, go for virajana because it is pitta kapha shamana in nature or reduces, helps balancing the pitta and kapha. Again, the probable mode of action here would be uh, it draws out the cellular fluid into the interstitial fluid and then into the vascular component and later into the GIT for elimination. So here it will create a biochemical alteration uh, and helping modulating the fluid compartments of the body. So during the process of virajana, body fluid is drained down and along with that body fluid, what happens is that dissolved biochemicals also get drained out. Reactivation. Next is the third procedure, Vasti. Vasti is a specific therapeutic procedure in which medicines are administered into the body to the lower part. Most of it be through the anus and it cleanses the accumulated toxins from all over the body.
Okay, this bhakti is uh, called as um, after chikitsa or half treatment. It is that important because of all treatments, it is all the treatments available, half is bhakti. That important it is in Ayurveda and in Pachagavana. Uh, so, general indications or conditions of initiated vata associated with Kappa Ayurveda, neuromuscular uh, disorders, weakness, movement disorders. Cyclic vaccine, musculoskeletal disorders, and post paralysis treatment. There are different types of vaccines uh, depending upon what kind of uh, um, material is used for the vaccine. We do have a usually a decoction only is used. Uh, Anuvasana is there is more of snigla or oil based or ghee based uh, uh, medicines are used for giving this vasti and Tritara vasti is uh, uh, either given through the uterus or through the uh, vagina in case of pain. So all these there are different types of vastis and different types of materials also used for vastis and they have their own uh, uh, effect in uh, reducing the different doshas, whether it is vata, pitta, or kafaina. And bhakti karma in general is uh, focusing at vata, and depending upon the, uh, depending upon the condition of the disease, whether it is kapha predominant or pitta predominant, we will choose the medicine that has to be added for administering bhakti. The ingredients are selected specific to that dosha involvement of the disease. The active principles in the formulation that we use. Uh, will get absorbed um, probably through the different parts of the GI tract from the rectum up to idiosyncratic junction. The presence of adjuvants in the form of Kakshaka Grimes, that is, um, whatever we add with the rest, some powder, uh, powders or some herbs, these seem to influence the absorption. Uh, but the exact nature of the influence uh, still remains to be determined. Next is nasya. Nasya is administration of medicine through the nostrils. Depending on the depending on the dose and ingredients, nasya can be shamana in nature or shodana in nature. Whether it can be alleviating also purifying. Uh, basic indications are different types of headache, premature brain and hair loss, diseases of the eye, ears and throat, oral diseases, frozen shoulder. Uh, the drugs administered through the nose will stimulate higher sectors of the brain, which shows action on uh, regulation of endocrine and nervous system function. Next is the last panchagrama, which is drug motion, which is uh, procedure of letting out initiated blood from the body. General indications are chronic unhealed wounds such as varicose ulcers, skin conditions like surface, inflammatory conditions with pain, burning sensation, swelling like gout, etc. So this is an important uh, procedure. There is a uh, Different forms are there. We can do the puncture uh, or uh, we can do using a leech. The, there is also modern leech therapy. Similarly, I will use the leech for uh, blood setting. Uh, and there is also wet and dry cupping. So, in case when we use the leech, the leech saliva has more than 105 active substances. So, they are responsible for any uh, therapeutic benefits like antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, anesthetic, thrombocytic, vasodilator, anti eddicantic uh, blood and lip circulation, and so uh, Similar uh, modern techniques is modern age therapy or hirudotherapy, uh, which has been extensively used in the last five decades, especially in reconstructive surgery. So in small in small areas that they do these reconstruction for cosmetic surgery, the breast flap uh, implantation or digit implants or ear, nasal tips, lips, maxofacial region, all uh, cosmetic or reconstructive surgery, they utilize the serial therapy so as to uh, it causes a uh, quicker revascularization. Also, it is being used in acute, subacute, chronic thrombocytosis and post levitis con uh, conditions, deep DVT, deep pain thrombosis, arterial hypertension, pyrogenic, frostbite, varicose veins, etc. 
so this is the five main therapies that I call it together as Panchadharma. Uh, so initially I told you that the main functions of Panchadharma are curative, uh, promoted, and uh, regenerated. So, but uh, what is promotion of health, uh, promotion and prevention of uh, diseases? Is through Guru Shobhana. Uh, initially, we had attended one of our classes of uh, our there was a Ritu Chaitya, that is uh, the different regimes that have to be followed in different Ritus or different places. So, uh, that depends upon, uh, for example, in rainy season, you have Bhada initiation. Then in uh, Sharat Ritu, that is autumn, you have Pitta initiation. And Basanta or spring season, you have Kappa Ketoka. So, these seasons uh, find the excess or aggregation of a particular motion. So, Doing the particular panchakarma for that uh, uh, dosha, for the aggravation of that dosha, will help to prevent diseases in the next, in that season or in the next coming season. So it will help in prevention of uh, diseases related to pathogens or So in Russia, it is advised ideally to do pasti, uh, pasti in Russia to for. Uh, uh, Controlling Vata. In case of Sharatutu, there is Pitta activation. So it is advised to do Viri Janakarma. And also in Vasanta Ritu, there is Kapha uh, Kopa happens, Kapha activation. So it is advised to do Now, some things that we have to follow after Panchakarma. One is important point is Samsar Janakarma. That is following a uh, light and um, proper dietetic regimen that will help to improve the digestive fire slowly or gradually. So just after Panjavarma do that, uh, the generally the body will become weak, digestive fire will also become weak. So slowly or gradually we should try and bring up this uh, digestive or metabolic fire so that arm or toxin, uh, toxin generation in the body is stopped at the level of metabolic fire. So, for that, we have to follow some sort of a or dietetic way. Now, uh, that is uh, dependent upon the Shuddhi that, or the Shuddhi Lakshana that we, the physician assesses after each Panchagama, whether it is Bhamana, Dhrujana, whichever Kama you are doing. The Pradhana Madhya and other Shuddhi Lakshanas are uh, noted down by the physician and we will be uh, judged as whether you have good uh, Pradhana or Complete should be or Madhyam should be or average should be. And based on that, some sort of drama can be, um, a plan can be made, a dietetic plan. So it starts with Peya, PAC. Peya is more about the food. That is, uh, rice is cooked with about 15 times water until the rice is slightly soft. And more about the fluid. Next, that will be one, uh, one or two days. Then next comes with AP. So there will be more lesser amount of water. Maybe eight to four times water rises go in, and that is the baby. Next comes with Yusha, like uh, Yusha, like green gram soup, etc. Uh, first two days you may take it unseasoned, and next again you can take it with season. Then comes a masas or a meat soup. Again, that is also initially you don't use any seasoning for it, and then later on you can add seasoning. So slowly you are. Um, uh, preparing the body to take a more heavier diet and slowly improving your digestion. So, in within either 3, 5, or 7 days, you will uh, reach your proper uh, strength of digestive fire, after which you can go on to eat it normally. Then, other things that you have to follow one is Amsarjana Kama, then you have to maintain adequate fluid intake in the form of warm water before, during, and after Amsarjana. And also, it is important to avoid physical and mental exertion, avoid gathering long distances and excessive talking. All these things will uh, impair your water uh, Also, you have to maintain proper night sleep, avoid a day sleep, avoid exposure to extreme cold and hot weather. So, these are the do's and don'ts during Panchavan. Some articles of interest uh, for further reading. Uh, in this, there is one comparative study on Bhavana and Nivejana in uh, type 2, type 2. It showed improved effects in uh, lipid profile uh, and other uh, parameters like uh, EMI, 
than fasting blood sugar in days of mamana uh, mamana was better than virechana similarly uh, some studies on lekhana vasadi which is one type of uh, desiccated medicated enema uh, then some studies on anesthesia and also there is one holistic review on medical which therapy in ayurveda and right how we have compared ayurveda with the modern medicine therapy. so these are some interesting articles to go to require i think that's all for today thank you all for your patience with me now the session is open for discussion so if you have any queries uh, you can please uh, either put it in chat and unmute yourself and ask I think uh, there are no questions. So I thank Dr. Akila for her uh, session. So thank you all for joining us. We are going to end the session. Thank you all. <laughs>